It's time for Ask a Republican. We actually need to get a musical uh, yeah, intro- introduction. His, bed? his name is Armstrong Williams. Uh, he uh, he's known for to be on the right side of things. He is a conservative. Um, I, I don't actually give him a, a party affiliation because you know sometimes he's just all over the map. Just kidding. Uh, anyway, uh, Army, how you doing this morning, sir? My favorite morning show and favorite posse in the morning. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, yes, awesome. my crew, like my posse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me say this, my gangsters. Yeah, gangsters. Oh, yeah. You, you're, thugs. you're so hip now. Hey, uh, the number here is one eight seven 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 two seven seventy seven forty six. We don't want to dominate everything. Alternative facts is the new <laughs> joke that's going around. Do you think the president should be focusing on this three to five million people illegally voted for Hillary Clinton? Should he be focused on that because he is the president? He won. So. You know, we should set aside alternative facts, um, who voted or not. He's president. I mean, we should set aside these high wire battle over words and inauguration cross sides, cross sides, and sort of look at the concrete actions that President Trump has taken to launch his presidency over the last few days. I mean, when you think about the ACA rollback, the regulation freeze, there's no more appointment abortions overseas, the, the EPA, The EPA gag order. The EPA gag order, the federal hiring freeze. I mean, he's going to allow the Keystone and Dakota Access Pipelines to go through. Oh, oh, oh join. And also, the pipelines must hire Americans. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Does he understand the ramifications and does he understand what he's signing? Because yesterday he signed the pipeline bill and held it up, look, show, show everybody his, show, showed everybody his signature and said, oh, we're going to be making our own pipes like we used to do in the old days, which led me to believe he does not know what the hell he's signing. Well, you know, when you have both the, the Democratic senators from those states that has been very supportive uh, and was not in line with President, former President Obama, uh, and the majority of the people in that state overwhelmingly want it, uh, the president gets solid advice. He understands the business aspect of it. And, and, and the fact is they want to create pipelines that are built by American workers. I think that's what he means. I don't think you can always take his words, words literally. But, it, I but think that's scary. Understand. That's dangerous if you can't take the president's word literally. Let's go right to the phone lines, Army, because we got a lot of people lined up to ask a Republican. Hello, who's this? It's Tracy from Cincinnati. How are you all doing? All right, you're on with Armstrong Williams. Go ahead. One question. Hey, Armstrong, I want to know if you think, hi, if you think the way the president has come out straight out the gate with all these executive orders and everything that he's doing, I want to know if you think he's going to last four years, and I want to know if you think his press secretary also is going to last four years. Well, you know, the press secretary Trace is in a very difficult slot because sometimes um, tr- he doesn't go far enough for the president, and you just can't always be in constant battle and war and chaos with the press. You've got to find some medium ground, and if the, it is, it, it, if the, 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 this Charles Spicer becomes the issue instead of the issue themselves, I mean, his, his tenure could be short-term. But in terms of the executive orders, when you talk about ex- expediting these permits for infrastructure, speeding up these environmental review regulations, Regulations. I mean, these are things that he promised in his campaign, and these are things that I think most Americans and most people who understand business and yeah, overburdens but from regulations will agree and, and embrace in the long run. Don't rush it because you make campaign promises and you're appointing people in your cabinet because you kind of owe them. Vegas. I like the infrastructure that, where they're going to spend a trillion dollars. That's jobs to me. And, you know, it actually is the same thing that President Obama proposed mm, some eight years ago that blocked. they shot down. Yeah. But, you know, because they didn't want to make them look good because this is actually a really good some things that he signed i th- think are good but a lot of it's symbolic because i want everybody to understand that uh, uh executive orders cannot overrule a law it can't do that he can only it is only almost kind of symbolic and like hey let's see yeah, i move forward think about my executive order let's go to the next line one eight seven seven par show good morning you're on with armstrong hi this is mark from cleveland and um my question is i've seen him sign all these executive orders and talking about um bypassing EPA regulations, making it easier for business. But does he realize that he's threatening national security with that? Because they said one of the biggest threats to national security is clean water and stuff, and there are wars in Africa going on over clean water that we don't even see. Mm. And he's putting the United States in danger uh, by letting these businesses just do whatever they want in the name of creating jobs and making money. Interesting question. Army. 
Well, you know, I think sometimes politicians often speak of the need to balance economic growth and environmental protection. And I think sometimes... But we haven't heard anything about uh, protection from him. It seems all it is is jobs and we don't, we're not worried about the environment. I haven't heard him speak one thing about saving the environment. It seems like he doesn't but, care. But, but, but I, think, I think that sensible free market policies that protect private property rights and respect the rule of law will create jobs while protecting the economy. And so the, the, the approval of this Keystone and Dakota Access demonstrate that. I mean, the president is not one on words and detailed explanations. You just kind of have to leave that to his lieutenants to explain that in details. But I do think Let's, what he's doing well, is very I hope it's not Kellyanne Conway because oh. she is now no longer credible. But let's talk about this, this key lime pipe thing. Um, the thing is, what I don't get is, you, you know, Trump, the, uh, the company that owns it gave Trump $100,000 for fundraising. His, he, Trump's had a share in the company that was between half a million, half a million and a million dollars. It's a Texas company, Energy Transfer Partners. And Rick Perry is now, what, head of energy? Just, it all makes sense. Business move. But, 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 I, but I think the important thing for most people who want to get beyond the, the rhetoric, the Obama administration's own State Department reviewed the project multiple times and concluded that the pipeline would pose negligible environmental risk and not contribute significantly to this global warning, which was a big sticking point and one of the reasons former President Barack Obama rejected the application. But it is a conflict of interest if our president had investments in the company. Energy Transfer Partners and Rick Perry, and that's gonna be, the governor of Texas. The, it's a Texas company. Come that on, is a big do problem. Do you, know you know what? You know what? That has to be vetted. That's why you have a Justice Department. Let's but vet this, our that president. Is Let's separate. see. That is separate. The president's own interest is separate your from the need department for the your, pipeline to go through. Your, your Justice Department has your, point, uh, your uh, appointees. So, I mean, this is... It's all a big racket. If we We're saw his taxes, I think we'd see Energy Transfer Partners with Uh-oh. some with some big stuff in there. Good morning, y'all. Until that becomes an issue and someone says that it's the president has issue. a conflict of interest, I think we should focus on the good of moving this economy forward and creating these jobs. You're on with Armstrong Williams. Go ahead, please. Good. Hey, what's up, West? This is Paul from D.C. How you doing? I'm right. Happy New Year to you, man. Good morning. Hey, look, my, my question to you is this. Do you think that it is healthy for our democracy, for our president, to be uh, belligerent uh, or degrading our intelligence department, their work, and how they're doing? And do you think that it's healthy in a democracy to have a president who no one can tell no, and he surrounds himself with those types of individuals? We're seeing a president that's in process. He's not a politician. He's used to being in total control. He's used to customers saying you're fired. And that you can do that in private industry. A federal bureaucracy where you're now CEO of the United States is a whole different ball game. And hopefully we see the president mature. Hopefully we see the president grow. And hopefully we see the president show that he can listen to others. He has the discipline to show the kind of leadership and give, make people very comfortable in these decisions. And that we had those same hopes for you and look what it got. Yeah. Army. Well, <laughs> I'm disappointed we, in you, Army. Listen, we might as well have Kelly Conway. You're you're just mm. no, no, Freddy. no. Hey, listen, Arms. In, in his defense, <laughs> how can he, you not say that's a conflict of interest? He, but, you don't know damn well did, it is. He Army. didn't say it wasn't. But but uh, Kelly and Conway would come on here and tell us, hey, that orange is an apple. Right. Armstrong's at least not doing that. Hey, Army, fact. let's get back at you in a couple weeks, okay? I always enjoy the respect, the integrity of this show and the, <laughs> fact, the, the feedback. I, do, I really do, because, you know, dialogue is important. We need to hear all sides. Then I need to hear from you guys. And, and there's no only way we can grow, because we all want the same thing, what is best for our country, especially for those who feel that the world has changed and they're in a state of shock. You've got to get to the point where they believe that Trump well, may do some things that they can embrace to begin to trust and give him a chance at becoming the president that we know he can become. Okay, that's Armstrong Williams before he gets a gag order right. from the White right. House. Right. You better stop talking. A lot of yes, talk stay right there. Right there. No gag order, baby. Morning show. The Rush Paul Morning Show. Rush Paul Morning Show. Paul Morning Show. Paul Morning Show.